If you look at, you know, the opposition party and how they portrayed the campaign, how they portrayed the transition, and now they're, they're portraying the administration, it's always wrong. I mean, on, on the very first day that Kellyanne and I started, we reached out to Ryan, Sean Spicer, Katie. It's the same team that, you know, every day was grinding away on the campaign, the same team that did the transition. And if you remember, you know, the campaign was the most chaotic, you know, by the media's description, most chaotic, most disorganized, most unprofessional, had no earthly idea what they were doing. And then you saw them all crying and weeping that night on, on, on the 8th when, when, and, and, and the reason it worked, the reason it worked is, is, is President Trump. I mean, Trump had those ideas, had that energy, had that vision that could yeah. galvanize a team around him of disparate, look, we're a coalition. You know, a lot of people think, you know, have strong beliefs about different things, but we understand that you can come together to win. And we understood that from August 15th, and, and we never had a doubt, and Donald Trump never had a doubt that he was gonna win. And, and I think that that is the power of this movement. Uh, President Trump, when he was running, he made a, and, and this is the other thing that the, 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 the mainstream media or opposition party never caught, is that if you want to see the Trump agenda, it's very simple. It, it was all in the speeches. He went around to these rallies, but those speeches had tremendous amount of content in them, right? I happen to believe, and I think many others do, he's probably the greatest public speaker in those large arenas since William Jennings Bryan. This was galvanized. So remember, we didn't have any money. Hillary Clinton, these guys had over two billion dollars. We had a couple of hundred million dollars. It was those rallies and those speeches. All he's doing right now is he's laid out an agenda with those speeches, with the promises he made, and our job every day is just to execute on that, is to simply get a path to how those get executed. And he's maniacally focused on that. And I think that's one of the powers of the transition, where many, many people try to come in and try to convince President Trump, hey, you won on this, but this is what you want to do. And he's like, no. I promise the American people this, and this is the plan we're going to execute on. And, and Ryan, so, so uh, and by the way, that's what you've seen: the executive orders, what the Supreme Court, the way he's gone through the Supreme Court, and by the way, the other 102 judges that we're eventually going to pick. It's just a methodical, and that's what the mainstream media won't report. Just like they were dead wrong on the chaos of the campaign, and just like they were dead wrong in the chaos of the transition, they are absolutely dead wrong about what's going on today because we have a team that's just grinding it through on what President Donald Trump promised the American people. And the mainstream media better understand something. All of those promises are going to be uh, implemented. I think if you look at the lines of work, I, I kind of break it out into three verticals or three buckets. The first is kind of national security and sovereignty, and that's your intelligence, the Defense right. Department, Homeland Security. The second line of work is what I refer to as economic nationalism, and that is uh, Wilbur Ross at Commerce, Steve Mnuchin at Treasury, Lighthizer at, uh, at Trade, uh, Peter Navarro. Stephen Miller, these people that are rethinking how we're going to re reconstruct the, uh, our trade arrangements around the world. The third, broadly, line of work is what is deconstruction of the administrative state. And if you... So I think, I think, I think the three most important things, I think one of the most pivotal uh, moments in modern American history was his immediate withdrawal from TPP. That got us out of a, got us out of a trade deal and let our sovereignty come back to ourselves. The people, the mainstream media don't get this, but we're already working in consultation with the Hill. People are starting to think through a whole raft of amazing and innovative bilateral relationships, bilateral trading relationships with people that will reposition America in the world as a, as a fair trading nation and start to bring jobs, high value added manufacturing jobs back to the United States of America. On the, on the, uh, on the national security part, it was certainly the first, I think the first two EOs that you've started to see implemented here over the last couple of days under General Kelly, and that is the rule of law is going to exist when you talk about our sovereignty and you talk about immigration. General Kelly and Attorney General uh, Sessions are adamant, you know, that, and you're going to start to see, I think, with the defense budget we're going to talk about next week when we bring the budget out, and also with uh, certain things about the, the plan on ISIS and, and what General Mattis and these guys think, I think you'll start to see the other part of that. But the third, this regulation, it, you oh, know, yeah. every business leader we've had in is right. saying not just taxes, but it is, right. uh, it is also the regulation. And I think the consistent. If you look at these cabinet appointees, they were selected for a reason, and that is the deconstruction. The way the progressive left runs is if they can't get it passed, they're just going to put it in some sort of regulation in, a, uh, in an agency. That's all going to be deconstructed. It's not only not going to get better, it's going to get worse every day in the media. <laughs> and here's why. But by the way, the internal logic makes sense. They're corporatist, globalist media 
that are adamantly opposed, adamantly opposed to an economic nationalist agenda like Donald Trump has. President Trump really laid this out, as Ryan said, many years ago at CPAC. It's really CPAC that have, have really originally gave him the springboard. It's the first time at Breitbart we started seeing him and see, saw how people, re, you know, his speeches resonated with people. And then he would go out to these smaller uh, town halls later and really he got traction with the same message he's bringing today. Here's the only, re here's why it's going to get worse. Because he's going to continue to press his agenda. And as economic conditions get better, as more jobs get better, they're going to continue to fight. If you think they're going to give you your country back without a fight, you are sadly mistaken. Every day, every day it is going to be a fight. And that is what I'm proudest of about Donald Trump. All the opportunities he had to waver off this. All the people have come to him and said, oh, you got to moderate. Every day in the Oval Office, he tells Reince and I, I committed this to the American people. I promised this when I ran, and I'm going to deliver on this. There's a new political order that, that's being formed out of this, and it's still being formed. But if you look at the wide uh, degree of opinions in this room, whether you're a populist, whether you're a limited government conservative, whether you're a libertarian, whether you're an economic nationalist, um, we, we have wide and sometimes divergent opinions. But I think we, the center core of what we believe that we're a nation with an economy, not an economy just in some global marketplace with open borders, but we are a nation with a, a culture and a, uh, and a reason for being. And I think that's what unites us. And I think that that is what's going to unite this movement going forward. President Trump tomorrow is coming, I think, really to express his appreciation. Absolutely. The vice president's coming The vice tonight. president's coming tonight. And the reason is he understands in CPAC there are many, many, many voices. But he's here to say appreciation and, a whole, and to drive this movement forward. This is really where he got his launch, you know, with his, his ideas in the conservative Absolutely. movement, what, seven, six uh, years ago, five years ago? And he wanted to show his appreciation. We're at the top of the first inning of this. And it's going to take just as much fight, just as much uh, focus, and just as much determination. And the one thing I'd like to leave you guys today with is that we want you to have our back. But more importantly... <laughs> we never... By the way, President Trump, we never doubt that for a second, but also, and more importantly, hold us accountable. Hold us accountable to what we promised. Hold us accountable for delivering on what we promised.